So in the FA Cup third round clash between Brighton and Crystal Palace, we saw the use of VAR for the first time in English football, another step forward in the advancement of our game, and we've seen various other technological advancements in years gone by. Let's take a look at six times technology changed football. First up we've got floodlights. Something that is considered basic nowadays and probably doesn't get considered when you're sat in a fully lit stadium browsing Twitter as your team goes one down, but there was a time when playing games at night wasn't really possible. The first floodlit game in England came in 1878, with Bramall Lane hosting a game between two South Yorkshire sides in front of around 20,000 fans under the lights. It would take almost another century for floodlights to eventually catch on, having been banned by the FA for 30 years. But they were installed by all football league clubs in 1967 and allowed clubs to experience famous European nights under the lights. Our next technological advancement is the ball. We've all heard about what footballs used to be like. A big round leather thing with an inflated pig's bladder tied together with football boots. A heavy ball that would get even heavier in wet conditions, making heading the ball quite an unpleasant and eventually dangerous experience, which Alan Shearer brilliantly brought to light in his recent Dementia documentary on BBC. Since the 1980s, footballs have been changed from leather, becoming much lighter and therefore less dangerous. While also making the game safer, the new balls have allowed better quality football, with the pigskin notoriously difficult to control and play a sexy football with. Now you can't see a Pep Guardiola side surviving with an old school football, can you? Next up we've got undersoil heating. Maybe something not as significant as the other things on this list, but without a pitch, we can't play, because I can't really see a Premier League game happening in the street like we all used to do as kids. The first ground in England to have undersoil heating was Goodison Park in 1958, and is now something that the majority of Premier League clubs have, despite not actually being a requirement. The undersoil heating stops games getting called off due to snow or frozen pitches, which is great, because there's nothing more annoying than your game of football getting called off. Up next it's Vanishing Spray. It used to be so annoying when your team had a free kick and the opposition would keep edging their wall closer to the ball behind the referee's back, making the free kick even more difficult to get up and over the wall. But that is no longer a problem with the addition of vanishing spray to the game, with the referees clearly spraying out a line for the opposition players to make their wall. Early on in its existence it was greeted with cheers by supporters, but now the vanishing spray is no longer a novelty at the top of the game and it was certainly a sad day when fans stopped cheering for the foam. Next up we've got goal line technology. It's amazing to think we went so long without goal line technology, but it's only been permitted in football since 2012. While that was too late to save Frank Lampard in England's 2010 World Cup clash with Germany, it's brought to an end the debate of did it cross the line, with the referees watch buzzing if the whole ball crosses the line. Sure some people have questioned goal line technology at times, such as Jonathan Pearce pondering that it had once failed, and Garth Crooks once claiming that enough of the ball was over the line that it should have been a goal, in a clash between Newcastle and Fulham. But the use of goal line technology was a necessary step to take football towards a more perfect game without ripping out its unpredictability. And finally it's the video assisted referee. So that brings us to the most recent technological advancement in football, the much debated VAR. The VAR can be used for just four things in a game, goals and whether there was a violation in the build up, penalty decisions, straight red cards and cases of mistaken identity. Hopefully this is as far as it goes, because otherwise the game could be slowed down at the point of it losing its excitement, plus you still have that element of doubt, because in some cases such as red cards, there are different opinions, and even using the video replay doesn't necessarily mean we'll get the right decision. For example, people were split down the middle when debating the penalty Chelsea were awarded against Arsenal the other day, so would a replay really have helped? However, it's certainly a step in the right direction, and will help referees do their almost impossible job. So those are six times technology changed football, let us know your thoughts in the comments below, especially on the newly introduced VAR. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, share and subscribe.